Am I the butthole for calling out my coworker and leading them to tears? Posted by Thrower up 123,545. I work what some people in the medical field would consider a unicorn job. No weekends or holidays, no on-call, and for me, a set schedule. I have been working this set schedule for more than a year without issue. This was decided with my manager upon hire, though not in writing. At the time, I was the first and only full-time employee, so I was offered my choice of scheduling. My tenure to new employees has held up and in my opinion, rightfully so. My experience in the medical field has always been, if you are tenured, you are going to get the best schedule. While recently my manager has informed me that there are complaints from the other four employees that it is unfair that I don't work Fridays or weekends, but none of us do, and that he would like for me to work a few Fridays. Now I am a single mom with young kids. My kids are in multiple therapies, sports classes, and all appointments for routine things are scheduled out for Fridays. And at this point in the year it is scheduled out basically through December because my set schedule has been the norm for over a year. In talking with a few of my coworkers, three of them don't really mind that my schedule is what it is and understand where I am coming from. I am the only one of us with small kids to have to work around. However, today when my manager approached me again about these complaints, I know who it came from because I've already confronted the others. So I confronted coworker hash four in front of the others, asking why there is such an issue with my schedule, which is truly none of their business why I am available or not available certain days. This coworker stated things like it's not fair, and Fridays are a hard day, and if I want a Friday off I have to request it, and I only get it off if I'm going out of town. Okay? And? That is not my issue. Why does it need to be fair? This is the real world and not kindergarten. I have never worked a job where an equal level coworker's opinion dictated someone else's schedule. Why do I have to pull my children from sports and classes and rearrange our life because one person cried about fairness? During this confrontation, this co-worker told me that is between you and the manager and I said, yeah, it was until you decided to complain about it, and now it, it involves you. Co-worker hash four got teary-eyed and left crying after the relatively civil confrontation. Meaning there was no yelling or name calling, but they cried. So am I the butthole for calling my worker out and making them cry? Made of sea glass commented. As a manager, if I heard you'd shaken down your coworkers like this, I would seriously consider firing you. That's unhinged behavior. Your schedule is between you and your manager. When your coworkers felt that there was a disparity in treatment around scheduling, they took the correct tact and approached your manager about it. What your manager does from there is their own prerogative, and if you are frustrated by his decision, you should talk to him about it directly and lay out your boundaries, e.g. this job won't work for me if I am required to work Friday. It is incredibly bad judgment for you to confront your coworkers because they advocated for themselves appropriately. If I was your manager, I'd be wondering what other bad judgment calls you might be making when I'm not around, and whether I can trust you to communicate with other employees in a positive and professional manner, and that would make me very unlikely to keep you on long term without some major changes in your attitude and comport. You the butthole. A comment from Crafter 2307. You the butthole. Sound as entitled as hell. A year-ish is not tenure. I say ish as clearly these co-workers have been around for a while now, as well if they're fed up. If you don't want to do out of hours, etc., don't choose a field and a job where these are required. Your choice to have kids shouldn't impact on your co-workers. Their time isn't less important than yours just because you have kids and they don't. You're all the same level and frankly, if I was your manager, it'd be managed on an even basis. It seems unfair that one employee's schedule could be altered due to a complaint from a coworker without considering the personal responsibilities and commitments of the affected employee. Is it fair to rearrange someone's life based on the fairness perception of a coworker? To the next post. Am I the butthole? Fiance thinks the apartment is haunted. I think she needs therapy. Posted by Throra 511,181. My fiancé Lynn and I, both 28, have been together for five years now. We are in a great relationship, so I can't really complain much about a lot. In terms of personalities, we get along good. Have many similarities and also many differences. For one, I am atheist and I don't believe in anything supernatural. Or spiritual. 
Lin, on the other hand, is very spiritual and believes in the other side and has told me accounts of supernatural things that have happened throughout her life. Well, fast forward to now, and this whole issue, we moved into a new apartment last year together, and it's caused nothing but constant stress for her. And now, me. The people in the apartment building are pretty nice, but I do admit everybody there is a little strange. They all go into each other's apartments, have keys, hang out together. There are six units here. This apartment was made in the 1800s, so it's an old Victorian house. No doubt it has history, but the stuff that's happened has been weird. But I don't believe it's due to supernatural things. I think it all can be explained. Lynn seems to think it can't be explained since all of these issues seem to happen and stop all at once. When there's a presence in the apartment, some weird things do all happen, and it does stop when said spirit leaves. The first time this all happened was a month after we moved in. The issue seems to be in the kitchen. Our cat peed in the kitchen in the middle of the floor which she never does and never wants to go in the kitchen. The broom in between the fridge and wall would fall over randomly when there was nobody there. This is what happened the most. Shampoo bottles fell off the shower. I thought maybe a neighbor did it by slamming the door but nobody was home the day I personally witnessed it. As this is happening, the fire alarm went off at 1.3 a.m. As we got up out of bed to turn it off, it immediately stopped. I replaced the battery. Clean dust. Tested for carbon monoxide with our separate alarm. Nothing. When this all happens, we both seem to wake up in the middle of the night for no reason. Then this all stops and nothing ever falls. The alarm never goes back on. And there are no weird noises. Until it comes back. I told her that it's all just an old house and things fall. The fridge is a little older, so maybe we don't close it all the way. There's explanations for everything. The other day, these things all happened again. While she was in the shower, the picture frame we have in the bathroom fell and shattered, and that's what did it for her. She was telling me she wants to leave, she's paranoid. But I told her she needs to seek help for her paranoia with this, because it's starting to be too much. We cannot just leave now. There are no ghosts. What do you think of all of this? Let me know of your thoughts in the comments below. Vigilante Snail commented. You moved into an old Victorian mansion with a girl who's afraid of ghosts. Really incredible stuff here, guys. A comment from Alex Sumner Author. Info. Did you take the cat to the vet after the spraying incident? When a cat does something like that, it could be a sign of illness, such as a UT, failing eyesight, i.e. she has difficulty finding her litter tray, or even dementia. In any event, my first thought would be for the welfare of the cat, not whether there is actually a ghost in the kitchen. It's understandable that the OP's fiancé might be feeling uncomfortable and anxious due to the strange occurrences in their new apartment. However, it seems that the OP's dismissal of the supernatural aspects of these events, and his suggestion that his fiancé seek help for her paranoia, may be insensitive and not fully acknowledging the emotional impact these events might be having on her. If you like this content, please consider subscribing. We post new Reddit stories every single day. Check out our playlist with all our videos. You can find it in the description box below. Have a miavelous day, and see you in the next one.